Your Excellency Uwad Sdayr al Kitbi, Director General of the Dubai Health Authority. Your Excellency Fernando Ferreñas, Ambassador of the Republic of Portugal to the United Arab Emirates. Distinguished guests, friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to our closing ceremony for the World Hospital Congress of 2022. I hope that you've all enjoyed the past three days of learning, knowledge exchange and networking. And I trust that you're taking with you many inspirations, innovative ideas, good practices and examples that will help you provide more sustainable health services. They say, we do not remember the days, but we remember the moments. And as we're nearing the end of our Congress, let's take a quick look at some of the memorable moments of the week. We are honored to host the prestigious IHF World Hospital Congress for the second time in Dubai. There is no more important role for healthcare leaders today than to share our knowledge, best thinking, and practices to advance health. And there is no more important time for each of you and all of us together to come together than right here, right now, at this World Hospital Congress. It looks like everyone had a good time and benefited from the scientific sessions and enjoyed the opportunity to collect, connect with their colleagues from all around the globe. Now to close our scientific program and to provide reflections on what was discussed in the past few days, we will hear from the Regional Director of the WHO Eastern Mediterranean Region, Dr. Ahmed Al Mandari. But first, let's welcome on stage Dr. Rana Hadji, Director of Program Management at WHO. Hello, assalamu alaikum, good morning. Colleagues, uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting us to be part of this really uh, very important meeting on behalf of uh, Dr. Ahmed, who will be speaking in a minute, and all my colleagues at the WHO Eastern Mediterranean Regional Office, I would like to thank the IHF and thank all of you for very rich and very engaging uh, last uh, three days of discussions. We actually just finished a session at one of the side meetings uh, where WHO was discussing with various panelists 
our approach at WHO to build resilient health systems in general in the region, and in particular focusing on building resilient hospital health system and how hospitals are a critical and a crucial part of universal health coverage and resilient health systems overall. You know, honestly, at WHO, we did not used to focus a lot on hospitals because we focus on preventive sectors. We focus on uh, preventing people even from getting to the hospitals if we can. But what we learned, especially during the COVID pandemic over the last three years almost now, is that hospitals are crucial to health systems. Our region is really a very, as Dr. Ahmed likes to say, our region is a very diverse region. But we have to admit that we have a whole spectrum of systems and hospitals that kind of span the whole spectrum of hospitals, you know, with very, very limited resources operating in very basic environments to hospitals like here in this wonderful city of Dubai hosting us today that are really way beyond the, um, you know, uh, the high level uh, standards of care. So we have the whole spectrum that we have to accommodate, the low and the middle income countries, the countries that are in emergencies in our region out of the 22 countries in EMRO, we have nine of the 22 countries are actually in acute conflict or emergencies. Huge pressures on the system and you can imagine on top of all what's going on came the uh, added pressure of, uh, of COVID and having to deal with COVID and the, the resources, the strain on the healthcare workers. But nonetheless, what we have demonstrated, I think as a community, globally, in the region, in all the countries, that we are resilient because we were able to survive COVID. And we actually proved, you know, de facto, that we can deal with this. What we are looking for is actually how can we make this sustainable in the long term? How can we ensure that all the benefits and the lessons learned from COVID at the expense of the lives of so many dear colleagues in healthcare are actually not lost? We should not, we should never lose what we learned during COVID, never. You know, I, I trained in the US and you know, you, uh, there's a, the famous thing say, remember the Alamo. What we need to always say is remember COVID. Anytime one of the hospital or the administrators or the managers forgets or do not put enough resources into certain areas, we have to say remember COVID and remember all the people who lost their lives for us to really survive this horrible pandemic. So with that, I would actually um, like to give a hand to all of you who are here, who are sharing their experiences, helping us as WHO develop the guidance and the, um, all the guidelines, all the normative uh, documents that are needed to guide the system. Without you, we cannot, we cannot develop these. Without you, we cannot implement. So um, I would like to give a hand to all of the people here for their wonderful contributions over the last three years and for helping the world actually survive COVID. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our regional director, Dr. Ahmed al Mandari, for his opening or closing video. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Esteemed experts, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is an honor to address the World Hospital Congress, and I wish I could have joined you in person. This year's theme, Global Learnings, Local Actions, Sustainable Healthcare, reminds us of the need to apply lessons from the global COVID-19 pandemic to improve care in every hospital and in every community. In the Eastern Mediterranean region, more than half of the countries of the region are facing emergencies and the pressure on hospitals and health systems is enormous. But as the pandemic has shown, adversity begets innovation and innovation builds resilience. The pandemic has highlighted the importance of hospitals' resilience and their role in expanding universal health coverage, addressing health emergencies and promoting healthier populations. Resilient hospitals maintain their functions amid crises while leaving no one behind. As a result, they improve access and coverage, reduce vulnerabilities and address inequalities, 
Recently, WHO's Director General, Dr. Tedros, identified five priority areas for the global public health agenda, namely the five Bs, promoting health, providing health care, protecting health, powering progress through science and improving performance. Hospitals have an important role in fulfilling each of these five priorities. First, hospitals are crucial in health promotion and improving population health. Hospitals bear much of the cost if prevention is not prioritized. They must also embrace social responsibility and mitigate the impacts of their activities on the environment. Second, hospitals are key providers of health services, including during emergencies. In the post-COVID era, we must optimize appropriate models of care and transform hospital sectors to integrate and embed them within community-oriented primary care-based health systems. Hospitals must also prioritize health equity and play their role in ensuring that no one is left behind. Third, hospitals are critical in protecting health. They help to fulfill essential public health functions and strengthen health systems. They also reduce vulnerabilities to health threats ultimately enhancing health security. We need to protect them by stopping attacks on health facilities during conflicts and pushing for health for peace and peace for health. Fourth, hospitals push the boundaries of innovation, harnessing science, research, and digital technologies. The integration of telehealth and the rapid development of vaccines in response to the pandemic have both highlighted the massive potential for transforming and optimizing health system performance. Finally, whether at the hospital level or within WHO, at the core of improving performance is leadership and management. The most important lesson from COVID-19 is simple. Empower people. To build back more resilient, hospitals must prioritize health worker well-being invest in building managers' capacities, and cultivate cultures of learning, empowerment, and innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for your contributions to this important Congress. I hope you have been inspired by the many examples of resilience and innovation that have been shared over the last few days. WHO is proud of the long-standing partnership with the International Hospitals Federation and I look forward to continuing to work together to achieve our regional vision of Health for All by All. We thank Dr. Ahmed al Mandari for that insightful speech. We'll now move to the awarding of the People's Choice for Best Posters. We have over 140 posters showcasing impressive projects and initiatives under three sub-themes. During the welcome reception, IHF CEO Ronald Lavater announced the best posters selected by our judging panel. But we also gave the attendees the power to vote for their favorites through the event mobile app. We have tallied this vote to determine the three awardees. Let's welcome on stage IHF CEO Ronald Lavater and the Chair of the Scientific Committee, Dr. Farid al Khajet, to present the award certificates. Beginning with the People's Choice Awardee for the sub theme Improvements in Delivery of Care. The winning poster is Systematizing Care at Distance Expert Recommendations to Remote Nursing Consultations in Portugal. And we invite Ricardo Correa de Matos from Secao Regional do Centro da Orden dos Enfermeros Portugal on, to join us on stage. awardee for the sub-theme, The People Agenda. The winning poster is 
establishment of COVID vaccination center in Al Kharj with community participation. We invite Dr. Anuhal Klatawi from King Khalid Al Kharj Hospital, Saudi Arabia, on stage. And finally, the People's Choice Awardee for the sub-theme Green Hospitals. The winning poster is Quiet Time Implementation of Noise Pollution Reduction Strategies in Pediatric Intensive Care Units. We invite Muna Shaksi from the Royal Hospital in Oman on stage. Thank you, Dr. Farida. Congratulations to the winners, and we encourage all the poster presenters to continue promoting good practices and innovation in health services delivery. The IHF and DHH sincerely appreciate the support and contribution of our wonderful sponsors and exhibitors, which helped ensure that our attendees have a great experience at our Congress. Let's hear from our platinum sponsor, Unilabs, Please welcome the CEO of Unilabs Middle East, Mohamed Daoud. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Excellencies, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to personally thank uh, the Dubai Health Authority and the IHF for hosting this year's event in Dubai, uh, you know, a city where we coincidentally had another fantastic event like the Expo and, and many other uh, global series that are ongoing. Um, this year's Congress has been exceptional and successful by all standards. It provides us as leaders of healthcare organizations and providers with a fantastic opportunity to exchange views on the best practices in leadership, innovation, and healthcare provision. Unilabs has always been committed to supporting major events like the IHF and, and uh, others. And uh, the main rationale is to, that it brings together high-profile leaders from all across the world to discuss more resilient and sustainable ways of delivering the healthcare services. We're very proud of our effective partnerships with the Dubai Health Authority as well as with other authorities in the UAE and across the globe. And we look forward to supporting the uh, global healthcare system to drive its journey towards new heights of innovation and technological excellence. Um, we adopt care big as our mantra, and this is what makes us stand out as an organization. Whenever we care big, it makes a real difference to colleagues, customers, and patients. To care big is to go above and beyond the call of duty, whether we've been asked to or just because we know it's right. Care Big encourages us to focus on the needs of customers, whether they're patients or hospitals or other facilities. They're the center of what we do and the people who de depend on us to make effective decisions. Care Big reminds us that our ultimate goal is not simply processing samples or, or getting the service done, but finding answers that help innovate people's li improve people's lives. Therefore, we will continue to make the most of all our technical resources and expertise to support the production capacity of the global health system. During the last three days, I'd like to add that we learned that AI solutions can be used uh, to fill in the gaps of care, enhance the accessibility within the healthcare system, and AI solutions uh, that continue to grow and develop within the sector, especially since there's a huge need and demand to actually use these AI tools in line of the decline of special, uh, specialist pathologists and other healthcare workers. 
Over the course of the 45th World Hospital Congress, we have been keen to share our knowledge and experiences on how digital transformation can play a fundamental role in improving the health sector performance. Taking advantage of the UAE's advanced infrastructure has made this uh, available to the diagnostic lab sector in order to demonstrate and try uh, new things and, and processes. In conclusion, I'd like to express my gratitude and appreciation to the leadership uh, of Dubai Health Authority as well as the leadership of the IHF for having this year's uh, conference and which I may reinforce with successful in all standards. Thank you all very much and have a wonderful stay in Dubai. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dawood. And now, let's hear from the leadership of IHF and DHA, co-hosts of this year's event. Let's first hear from the President of the International Hospital Federation, Deborah Bowman. Hello again. I hope you all have had a wonderful time here. We are honored again by having His Excellency Awad al Ketbi here with us today, Ambassador Fernando. And obviously, I want to extend my very dear uh, thanks to Dr. Ramadan Nelbushi, Chair uh, of the Congress Organizing Committee, and of course, Dr. Farida al Kajar, Chair of the Congress Scientific Committee, and of course, Dr. Munatalek, who is the President Designate of the IHF and CEO of Latifa Hospital in the Dubai Health Authority. It's indeed a pleasure uh, to be with you again, distinguished guests, uh, friends and colleagues. I hope you've had a good time, and I hope you've learned a lot during these last three days. I don't know about you, but I've had an amazing time, full of focused, rich conversation, and of course, it's been wonderful to see you all in person right here in Dubai to have the opportunity to really uh, look at you face to face and learn together. The incredible light of learning we've enjoyed has given us new perspectives we can carry with us into our everyday world. We set the stage with global learnings, local actions, sustainable health care, and our plenary sessions offered thoughtful insights as we shared important priorities in health care. We've had instructive conversations about how providers are influencing and impacting the future delivery of healthcare, and how we're addressing important challenges like workforce, resiliency, sustainability, and a growing and important issue, and so much more. The depth of collective expertise on display here at this forum has been truly remarkable. Not only will that expertise guide us as we work to address the challenges we face today, but can it, it can inform the impact we have as we move forward. In my opening remarks, I discussed the power of synergy in transforming the global healthcare delivery landscape. The solutions and best practices shared these last few days are sustainable in ways that can help us make an impact well into the future. We have the opportunity now to convert global learnings into our local actions applying the wisdom we've gained and understanding from our collective work into local action. Collaborating is what makes this forum so very, very exceptional. We arrived here as individuals, but we lead with the expertise of our community to help us attain our shared goal to provide safe and equitable care to all. My sincerest thanks to the Dubai Health Authority, the city of Dubai, in their warm hospitality and this exceptional program. Thank you to the IHF Governing Council and to everyone who worked so hard to make this event such a great success. I want to thank the IHF team for all their hard work. And without all of you, this event would not have been possible. And I look forward to seeing all of you at the 46th World Hospital Congress I wish you safe travels home and hope we will be together again next year in Lisbon. Until then, I wish you well on your leadership journey. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Deborah. 
Let's now hear from the Dubai Health Authority, and I'm delighted to welcome to the podium CEO of Latifa Hospital and President Designate of the IHF, Dr. Munet. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Um, and thank you, Deborah, for your leadership and for your uh, speech. Um, yes, we are at the closing ceremony of IHF. Alhamdulillah, the 45th uh, Congress is almost at the closing stages. And no doubt, it was a very successful event. We just heard Dr. Mandari, a regional director of WHO, talking about the five Ps. And the first P was promoting health. And what could be more than having a sustainable health care that promotes health and we have sustainability. Um, we also heard uh, Dr. Arana saying, you know, we shouldn't forget um, COVID. Um, yes, a lot of lessons learned, but I guess, you know, it was so nice um, to see life back to normal. Um, when we started day one, the place was so crowded. Um, to me, it was like back, you know, almost fast forward, backward, three years back when life was totally normal. So yes, we agree, lots, lots of lessons learned, and we should keep always that in mind, but I'm really happy that, you know, we were able to see you all in person here in Dubai. This year, it was Dubai Health Authority who had got the privilege to conduct the IHF Congress, and we are very much honored and delighted to have hosted the event in Dubai. A special thank to Your Excellency Awad al Kitbi, Director General Dubai Health Authority, for making this happen. Thank you so much. I would also like to thank um, Index for this amazing um, you know, uh, work that you guys did. Um, all the really comments that I've heard so far have been extremely positive from arrangements to hospitality to everything, A to Z, so thank you. I would also like to thank the DHA organizing team led by Dr. Ramban. Thank you for making this happen in this wonderful way. And Dr. Farid al Khaja for the scientific, uh, chairing the scientific committee and really bringing all the meat into, into this Congress. Thank you. I should also mention the leadership of Ron, CEO of uh, IHF. It's been wonderful, Ron, working with you. And we do see how IHF is transforming um, and, you know, new things coming. So, you know, it's not just knowledge. I think one thing um, that we are really proud of this year, uh, especially, is the work of the Geneva Sustainability Center. Um, work in progress, but beautiful. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, thank you, um, Levant, for this. Um, but I think really it's going to be a tool um, that most of us can use and really help, um, you know, in the sustainability and how can healthcare really improve that uh, agenda. So thank you all. Um, I would like to thank um, all the speakers and the attendees for their input, but most importantly, really, I want to also thank the IHF team, each and every one that has been behind this, working day and night, making this possible. So thank you to all of you. Thank you. And so the 46th Congress, I guess, is um, going to be planned to be in Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, as we had uh, a great event here in Dubai, we would love to continue this experience and see you all in Lisbon next year. Thank you and hoping you have a good trip back home and a pleasant stay in Dubai. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Munak. It's time for us to bid farewell to the 45th World Hospital Congress in Dubai and turn our eyes towards Lisbon, Portugal. Let's welcome back on the stage Director General of Dubai Health Authority, His Excellency Awad Sayyid al-Kitbi for our Congress handover. 
And let's also welcome on stage His Excellency, Fernando Figuerini as Ambassador of the Republic of Portugal to the United Arab Emirates. And please give a warm welcome to the representatives of the Portuguese Consortium, the hosts of the next Congress, Margarita Eiras from the Portuguese Association for Hospital Development, Oscar Gaspar from the Portuguese Association of Private Hospitals, and Xavier Barreto from the Portuguese Association of Hospital Administrators. On behalf of the Dubai Health Authority, His Excellency Awad al Kitbi is offering a gift to the Portuguese Consortium to symbolize the handing over of this important event to the next Congress host. given by DHA is a miniature figure of the Museum of the Future, which is a hub for the world's innovators to envision future technologies to benefit the world. Thank you. We're all very excited to go to Lisbon next year. And to give us an advanced welcome, here's Ambassador Fernando Fagrinas. Thank you so much. I would like to start by thanking you for the invitation and say that it is an honor for me to be present at the 45th World Hospital Congress here in Dubai. I would also like to congratulate the organization of this Congress and to the organizations that have participated, namely the International Hospital Federation, the Dubai Health Authority, with the presence of His Excellency Anwar al Khatibi, Director General of the Dubai Health Authority, and the Portuguese entities present very loud Portuguese entities present. <laughs> Namely, the Portuguese Association for Hospital Development, the Portuguese Private Hospital Association, as well as the remaining international participants, and the great representation of delegations from institutions of my country. Next year, it will certainly be with great pleasure that Portugal will host the organization of this Congress in our capital, Lisbon. The national consortium, comprised by the three entities already mentioned, give us the guarantee of an exceptional Congress to come, following the good example and excellent example of Dubai. It is important to highlight that in a global context of constant change and adaptation, the International Hospital Federation Congress represents an important forum both to discuss the challenges ahead and to reach consensus on the best ways to improve our health care systems. Portugal will certainly play its part and can contribute to this debate. The Portugal health system is recognized for its organizational capacity, innovation and obtaining results. Portugal is also recognized for its capacity to build bridges to contribute to consensus and to create compromises between different visions. The 46th Congress of the International Federation of Hospitals has therefore all the conditions to be a memorable Congress with important contributions to health policies. Therefore, everyone's involvement will be necessary and welcome, bringing together all visions and all experiences which may enrich our constructive discussions and debates. We therefore count on your presence of all of you in Lisbon in October 24. Thank you once again. Thank you. And now, to talk more about what's to come at the next Congress, let's hear from the representatives of the Portuguese Consortium, Margarida Eiras, Oscar Gaspar, and Xavier Barreto.
morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here. We started this joint venture in 2021 because together we wanted to bring the World Hospital Congress to Lisbon in 2023. We believe that Portugal is a country with much to show and offer. A vibrant country with a balance between trendy urban areas and beautiful landscapes, but also with a story to tell about the past, but also about the future of hospitals and healthcare. Portugal has over 500 years of experience in managing healthcare networks across countries and across locations. Due to our fundamental role on the age of discovery and following the developments, we want to, want to bring this con Congress to Portugal to show you our health organizations and our health system where the public sector coexists with the private sector, sharing a common ground, a humanistic vision of care delivery. We live in a context of global change. Next year, in the 46th World Hospital Congress, we will have the opportunity to discuss health challenges as a as part of an economic and geopolitical agenda and also to discuss the best solutions to improve healthcare systems and global health. As an international community, we can all benefit from a common strategy in key areas as digital health, leadership or new models of care. That's what we want to talk about in Lisbon. We want to talk to you about tomorrow's world. So to talk about tomorrow's world, we, we need all of us. So we look forward to seeing you in Lisbon in the 46th World Hospital Congress. Thank you very much. The next World Hospital Congress organized by the International Hospital Federation is going to take place in Lisbon next October 25 27. For the first time, the Congress is organized by a consortium of three hospital associations the Portuguese Association of Hospital Development, the Portuguese Association of Hospital Managers, and the Portuguese Association of Private Hospitals. Lisbon is a city with a river, or maybe a river with a city. Passing through Lisbon, the sun stops fall in love and stay. Resolve an incredible bright white color. So, next October, came to Lisbon, not just to enjoy the color, but to enjoy the food, to enjoy the wine, to enjoy the music. Next October, came to Lisbon, listen and discuss with experts, decision makers, and pharmaceutical peers, the tomorrow's world in, in the house. So, this is an invitation to all of you, all around the world. Allow me a special invitation to the Portuguese-speaking countries. Brazil, Angola, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, Cabo Verde, St. Maitreese and Timor Leste. Next October, Lisbon is the top. So, see you in Lisbon. If you don't stay like the sun, I'm sure you will come back. Thank you very much. See you in Lisbon, save the date, next October. Since 1929, the International Hospital Federation has made great strides in healthcare, hospital management and education. Keeping our services running, our professionals delivering, and our knowledge flowing. In recent years, the IHF community has gathered in some incredible cities to carry on this legacy. Now, we are continuing the vital work that has come before. 
On October the 25th to October the 27th, 2023, the International Hospital Federation is coming to Lisbon. Organised by the consortium of three associations, the World Hospital Congress will once again be a global forum for healthcare, hospitals and health services. Together, we will be envisioning tomorrow's world, focusing on our five key topics. Leaders successfully navigating the future, next generation sustainable healthcare, innovative approaches to care, the digital landscape, and the future for our professionals. This will all be to implement global learning and local action. Bringing delegates on site to meet and learn from members of Portugal's leading hospitals. Helping to drive knowledge and create impact across the entire healthcare sector. Thank you, and we look forward to welcoming you in Lisbon in 2023. Lisbon is very beautiful, welcoming, and has a wonderful atmosphere of friendliness. And it's the amazing destination for the next Congress. So please mark your calendars and make sure it's 25th to the 27th of October, 2023, where we shall all convene once more for more learning, exchanging knowledge, and networking. For everyone who joined us here in Dubai, we hope you had a pleasant stay, and we look forward to seeing you again next year and to end this ceremony on a Portuguese note, obrigado e boa sorte. Thank you very much.